All right, well, <clears throat> it's time to um, raise Atlantis and its three rings. All right, so we'll just uh, okay. approximate the sun. Uh, things have changed a little. I guess Paul Martin is finally pushing up the uh, <clears throat> monopolize the sea thing. I mean, with good intentions, but he's not being specific enough and thorough, so... Damn you, big witty will kill everyone. <clears throat> As in, you know, you won't be able to do anything unless you're like Walmart size or too big to fail or whatever. So let's get back to the earth. Anyhow, just uh, give you a little idea there. The flight path. Gonna be, and this is where I need more arms. <coughs> no, so we can see that. Yeah. Okay. There we go. That works. That's that's about right. So the flight path. You can see me here. Of the three neutronium is gonna come in, like so. Of course, you're using the gravity engine over top. Well, well, we'll, we'll go back to the model. Uh, we'll just take that as our cue. Uh, and we're answering the Earth Challenge here, Richard Branson and uh, Al Gore. There's the website, anyone, if you want to check it out, I'll put the link down below there. Okay, so anyhow, and the whole thing is, is about removing greenhouse correct gases. And just in case your minds are a little foggy, like mine always is, we'll just stop there. presentation here. Close enough. Don't mind the noisy rocket engine in the background. It also doubles as a fridge. Okay, so let's go on here. Yeah, th there we go. There's the contest. Uh, here's your email address. So. Okay, I'll put the uh, link. And that's uh, Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson. Uh, Virgin Cell Phones, you might know him from that. The uh, the little uh, tourist spaceship. Uh, this is the one we want. It's, uh, well, just have to see. Maybe I lost it. There we go. Ah, there's Richard. Sir Richard. And, well, you all know El Gore, the uh, car carbon tax salesman. <clears throat> okay, so anyhow, um, 25 million. Right there. Uh, sure, I can I can complete this task for 25 million. You can pay me after I'm done. <clears throat> if you want to. You know, if at some point you want to throw some cash down, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to have a couple of million, maybe maybe 10% down to uh, <clears throat> once the uh, progress is uh, well enough that you can see what's going to happen and how it's going to work. And uh, maybe the rest when it's success. And I'll get comfortable operating cash so I can uh, concentrate. So there's our target right there. Okay, as I said, the bolides are going to the gravity engine is going to be going this way and end up down north of Bermuda and um, three shards of neutronium I'm donating to give you guys an extra day and here so on the Tropic of uh, Cap 
Cancer, Capricorn, and the Equator. And those will be your three primary uh, Holy Comforter generators, right? That's the water's going to go into the holes and uh, uh, we're going to make split water and make hydrogen and oxygen and <clears throat> get them up with uh, jets up into the uh, where, where they need to be. You know, <clears throat> 80 kilometers up and, and higher. Well, 80 kilometers for the oxygen. Not uh, even less, you know. Uh, so they're just going to be hot wells, basically. And uh, you'll get more land out of them. And Atlantis, where we're going to deorbit uh, to rise Atlantis, that's where we're going to deorbit the uh, gravity engine going the opposite way. Uh, after it sinks these two on its final orbit, then it goes in there. And uh, the waves, <clears throat> the little bit of uh, tsunami, uh, will pretty well cancel each other. So the, the uh, coastal disturbances will be quite minor. We'll, we'll go over this again. And we'll just... Uh, See, see the wind patterns here, but we'll, uh, we're not looking for that. Mm -hmm. Now I know I got them here somewhere. There we go. There. Ah, that's our primary target right there. Because under here we have. Let me bring in for a close up. <clears throat> the South Atlantic anomaly, right? Which is uh, the last time we had a hydrogen, uh, a water splitter down there. Um, <clears throat> basically, the the, the one um, got away and was ran uh, longer than it should have. There were, uh, <clears throat> I won't get into the details right now. Um, so basically, it's been overrun, and this is the last time you can run it, and it's all on its own. That tremendous earthquake that, that you guys were told about, right? That's when this cold blob below subducts and cuts loose, right? There's there's like a huge, huge fucking blob under there. That's what causes the uh, gravitational anomaly because it's a uh, cooled magma, magma, right? We we went over this. I'll I'll attach. <laughs> I'll, I'll attach the link over there to the video that gets into greater detail with that. Alright, so uh, these were our basic options where we could set these up. And these are all the hot spots. Um, obviously, we have way too much Fukushima still in the atmosphere above the... Oh, okay, let's just back it out so you can see the whole thing. We have uh, way too much Fukushima over here. Well, there's Japan, right? So all the way around the globe in the Pacific uh, and it's already uh, that also caused it <clears throat> there's way too much activity there so we don't want to do that our main concern is getting rid of the South Atlantic anomaly instead of making it tip the way it's going to left alone under the Antarctic and uh, throw the uh, make a major adjustment on how on the Earth's tilt right the uh, center of gravity basically um, we're going to make it cut loose and tip and swing back towards the equator so we don't get a huge uh, uh, equator shift, basically center of gravity shift. Okay, and in the process we're going to be, uh, because not, not just from the impact angle going in like this on this side 